following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We're going to talk about knowledge and uh, the being. What is to know and what is the being? You see that uh, most of the time people believe or they think that to be is related to the memory. Because if I ask you, who are you? Immediately you use your memory. In order to remember your name, or to remember your ancestors, and you go in the fast. And that's because uh, we are identified with the mind. But there are two questions that we always ask. What is your name? And we answer, my name is this. Who are you? And then the, the answer will be in relation with the knowledge <coughs> that you have in your mind, in your memory. But you see, there are two types of knowledge. We call it the innate knowledge which is related with that which you are really, which belongs to you, and the acquired knowledge, which is related with uh, the personality that uh, we have in this time, in this life. But personality, which is related with the name that we have. According to our personality, which is developed, and according with the inheritance, with the education, and with the circumstances of life. <coughs> so, in accordance with the inher inheritance, we have, of course, uh, different ways of being. But it's not a being, it's a different ways of behaving, we will say in accordance with uh, the genes. That's why you find that certain people, certain races, behave different than other races. And that is because of the custom that we inherit. For instance, uh, Italians have certain uh, customs and habits that they transfer to their children. The Greeks have different habits and customs. That's like why the English, and that's why when you go to other countries, you always see the different uh, behaviors or different cultures, different towns. See, even in one country, 
you find different types of habits and customs. And that's because uh, habits and customs that people have developed in according to the environment, in according to their necessities in that particular area. Even the language. When we speak, for instance, if you observe that your language, in this case is English, the sound that predominates in the English language is E. E. I speak Spanish, so I know for sure that the sound that I hear more when I speak Spanish is A. Ah, no E, eh, like in English. And every language has different sound. <coughs> like I hear, for instance, different jokes in the different places of people that, when they talk about Italians, they emphasize the letter E. Hmm? In Italian, it really, the letter E is very common. It's more common than other sounds. You know, the sound E. Yeah, the letter I, but the sound E in this case, right? This, because uh, this letter I sometimes in English sounds in different ways, right? But it's the sound E, which is in Italian. Ah, Spanish. E, in English. In some languages like German are very guttural, like also French, sometimes in the mouth. You, you, you hear French people talking, other languages you hear there, sometimes they talk with their mouth. Mm. And likewise, you see them different activities of the centers of the body, of plexuses, which the word put in activity. Mm. And that's why in different types of, uh, of uh, countries, people speak different languages, and that language is related always with certain, with certain forces that they attract or reject. And based on that, you find what we call inheritance, habits and customs that we have. That's why it's easy when you hear, for instance, you see a movie or you see a couple of persons and you hear the way that they act and behave, oh yeah, they are English. It means that they recognize. And sometimes not even they hear how they talk, just how they behave, without listening to how the way they think, or they talk, I mean, they say, this people is such and such race. Okay. And it's because through time, we are inheriting that. We will say this mechanical in the personality. Hmm. But it is related just with the physical body or with the personality. And sometimes we say, or people say in those words, this is what I am. I remember, for instance, because when you are in the studies, you are tending also to identify yourself with your being. You understand that your physical body is only a vehicle that you have in accordance with the cause and effect, the law of karma. Right? Everybody has what he deserves according to his deeds, past lives. So when I uh, came here for the first years, I was helping a friend of mine from Chile to paint. I remember that uh, another friend of him, of his, <coughs> was also painting. He was from, or he is still, is alive, I believe, from uh, this island, the Caribbean island. It's called uh, Jamaica. Yeah. He was, of course, black. Somehow he was like, uh, Trying to command, to, to command us to do the things, right? When somebody can do it, uh, or paint, or help, you don't need to be commanded by anybody, right? So I was doing the things, but I was not, we will say, listening what he was saying, because I was very occupied. 
in the, something we were having a, a discussion there that somebody has to die and want to do things right. And he said, I know if I to paint, if I do it with love, it doesn't matter. No. And then he reached a point that he was so angry with me that he says, you are not black. And the moment that he said that, I just grasped the deep meaning of that. That answer or that statement is very deep, not only in, in his personality. It's coming from a long time, you know, in the past. In relation with slavery, in relation with many things that still people are rooted in. Okay? And that's precisely what people say. This is what I am. You see? This is a big problem. You see? Because we are so identified with our race and we think that this is what we are. You know? And that's why we find wars in this uh, planet Earth. Because that thing that we have in our blood, because that is really within the marrow of our bones. You know? And uh, sometimes we say, oh, we are going to identify with it. But deep down, we are very rooted in it. And this is our, some kind of ego really related with the personality. Mm. Having this type of things, you see, this is how uh, we, can, uh, we can call it uh, an inherit, inheritance that we bring from our ancestors. And that we have to study, to visualize in meditation, and not, not to be identified with it. Because this, this is, I repeat, one of the roots of different of different conflicts in the earth. That one becomes to identify with this type of situation. The other thing is education. You see. People use in, in different places to see with uh, what, is, what is scorn is the, the word? Disdain. People that aren't uh, illiterate or that are not so intellectual. They also associate that in order to be they have to accumulate a lot of knowledge. If somebody has a career is a doctor, is a lawyer, an engineer, or an architect. This person is somebody. I remember many times, for instance, people that with the children, they point a humble or simple uh, seller that is for selling there, for instance, uh, newspapers, or trying to survive in this jungle trying to to gain some sense in order to to eat, you know. And then the person says, see, you have to study in order to not to be like him or like her. Right. And then I said, why is the people always be seeing with the thing somebody like uh, to be poor is a crime? In this day and age people see poverty like a crime. You know? We would say, well if we don't find people, for instance, like in the subway, you find people that they clean your shoes. Somebody has to do it. Thank goodness that is somebody there that is gaining his life and doesn't want to do that. Everybody has different type of jobs. If everybody is a doctor in the earth, imagine more than four billion of people being doctors, everybody's healing, so it will take conflict. So in society you find you have to find different type of people with different type of knowledge. Mm. But the problem is not that. You see? When one understands that there is necessi the necessity of, of teaching different things or to know something in order to help others, like in my case for instance, I find myself teaching this. Why? I know this. But it's related with my being. 
this is something that we have to understand and to comprehend, the step of knowledge. Yeah. But I don't identify also with this, because certain things that I teach here, also I learned outside. And I had to develop that inside of me. But to think that I am that's because I have certain knowledge in my head that's wrong. Remember that uh, as we say in other lectures there are two lines in life to which we have to walk the horizontal and the vertical the horizontal line is what we are talking here which is related with the personality in which you have to develop certain things in order to survive in order to <coughs> gain your daily breath daily bread your food clothing, shelter but to identify with it and to think but I am something or better than something or somebody I mean just because I know more than this one it is wrong the type of knowledge that we receive in colleges universities in different ways doesn't change what we are in the depth in the issue of the being you can have in your brain the whole knowledge story of the earth you can learn all the languages of this planet and to read all the books written in all of those languages in this planet and you will be a great intellectual in the horizontal line but that won't change a bit the vertical which is related with your being there are a lot of people here and that type of knowledge that I'm talking here could be even spiritual knowledge as I say I know many things related with the spirit related with this doctrine but I am never identified or think that because I have th this knowledge is related with my being yeah. or with the development of my being the development of the being has nothing to do with all that we have in the brain which is or something yeah. has nothing to do even though the horizontal line and the vertical line encounter themselves always hmm? and one faces always society which is in the horizontal line in different levels in accordance to the being hmm? do you grasp that? Because the knowledge that you do acquire could be utilized in the horizontal line without taking in account your being, which is in the vertical. When you just said vertical means inside. The vertical line is inside of you. The horizontal has to be with the personality in which you are in relation with people. Circumstances of life also develop in the horizontal line. Therefore, you find different types of personalities, different type of people in relation with knowledge. The knowledge that I'm talking here is a knowledge that you memorize, that you force to grasp, to, to, to have in your brain, because you need it in this society. Like computers, for instance, 
In this day and age, one is forced to learn Kashkiri. We have to do it. Because it's advancing technology. If you don't know anything about that, if the ch- if children don't learn anything about that, when they are mature, they won't be, uh, have the capacity of uh, confronting the society. But there are many people, for instance, that will develop a lot of uh, skills in order to survive, but that has nothing to do with their being. People can be, for instance, like this, uh, let's say in this, uh, this example of Bill Gates, a great billionaire, that developed himself in the horizontal line. But all of the work that he's doing, that is very clever work, intellectually speaking, advancing, making a lot of money, that has nothing to do with his being. Nothing. Because the vertical line, is something very practical inside that is is related with that other type of of thing that we call the tree of life which is the development of the being and that in the beginning we were talking here what about telepathy what about clairvoyance what about other type of inner senses that people talk about? But that is related with the being. The tree of life or the being in itself utilizes 12 senses in order to develop The development of the being in the vertical line <coughs> has to do with other type of knowledge. A knowledge that you don't receive in lectures. A knowledge that you don't receive through books. is a knowledge that is related with the being. That's why it is written that in, in the Garden of Eden there were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But that tree of knowledge of good and evil is not a type of knowledge, as I said, that you will learn here in this physical world. Even though here in this school we give you knowledge that you receive with your personality, with your mind. But in you is precisely the option of putting that in the vertical. This is just a tool. Knowledge that if you practice it, and you develop it, and then you will develop in the vertical, which goes up, you see? Because the horizontal also is always in the same way, right? But the more knowledge you have, it gives you uh, more opportunities to identify what you develop. The more knowledge, of course, it depends, in this case, in the spiritual path, right? Which The spiritual path is related with the spirit, the being, which is vertical. But in order to develop that spiritual path, one needs in this horizontal line, in our personality, in our intellect, to have this type of knowledge. But one has to understand, to comprehend very deeply this work. Because there are a lot of people that have many books related with this knowledge that understand the knowledge intellectually speaking but they never put that knowledge in the practical way so therefore they are in zero in their being 
they are as when they didn't know anything about because to have the knowledge of the spirit or the knowledge of this path of course takes time for to comprehend to understand it is one thing but that is horizontal one needs to work in this knowledge in order to put it in the being in the consciousness inside just put an example uh, we were talking about Kabbalists it's a Hebrew word Kabel which means to receive this is Kabel to receive a great Kabbalist that receives knowledge his, his name is Rabbi what is a Rabbi? a Rabbi is a master it's a word for master but you can read many books related with Kabbalah or with the spirit, with the satirism and that will make you a Kabbalist but in the horizontal line if you don't put that knowledge directly into your being and receive the information directly from your being inside to your consciousness you won't be ever a real Kabbalist just an intellectual Kabbalist like in this very moment you are here listen to me and you are Listening in this knowledge, you put it in your in, in intellect. But we are here in the horizontal line. That won't change a bit your being. In order for you, or in order for your being to change, in order for you to change the level of your being, you have to put in practice what you listen what you are learning and that's something individual, particular in relation with your being and then you will, be, will start being <coughs> an intuitive Kabbalist or in other words you will learn you will know in the intuitive way when you learn in the intuitive way that is real knowledge because that knowledge is related with your being well in the horizontal line you listen with your intellect and if you don't put that in your consciousness then that knowledge is going to be lost when you die when you physically will die yeah so while learning um, or approaching this understanding or this knowledge in the intuitive way, is it normal to question constantly if it is really an understanding or is it when it's truly intuitive, well I know when it's intuitive you know without a doubt, but I mean when you're approaching that stage of really understanding when you feel something intuitively or something is just a wisdom that you've been given, is it possible to still be going through the doubting because you're still questioning the ego and how much of this is really a true sign or a true knowledge or how much of this is just uh, colored by egos and my wanting to believe this or wanting to believe that? Yeah, that's why the doubt will be always inside of us if we don't uh, uh, put that knowledge in the consciousness. To put the knowledge in the consciousness is to experience that. You see, it's not like they said, oh, I had to memorize this or to put that in, in to memorize it. No, it's to put it in the consciousness to experience it. It's like, for instance, I will tell you an example. I tell you, you put your finger in the fire, your finger will be burned. Logically, you say, yeah, yeah, it sounds logical, yeah, the fire burns, etc. I will burn my finger. But if you don't do it, you won't experience that directly in your flesh. If you do it, then 
that is a direct experience. This is a physical example. But maybe with the consciousness, for instance, many times I talk about Genesis, because the book of Genesis really is a, it's a great book. But it's written as a knowledge, in other words, of the consciousness for the being. It's written for the beings, for the beings. In other words, only the being in contact with the consciousness will understand that. A lot of people in this day and age, because millions of Bibles written in different languages exist, and they repeat and repeat what is written in Genesis, and sometimes they change that because they do not understand the meaning of it. But they talk about that in the horizontal line. And they read and memorize. But that's very bad. If you memorize something without understanding it, it's very bad. It damages the brain, mind, yeah. consciousness. What one, what one has to do is to meditate. You see? For instance, when I'm going to give something in relation with this book, or in any type of a straight book, I just don't read it, you see, I, I want to talk about that, and I read it. Something there. You read one paragraph or one part of what is written, and then you close your eyes, and then you memorize that. But then you pray to your inner God in the vertical, in meditation. To pray is to talk with God, and only to receive you see, the explanation of that which is written there. In order to understand, because everything is logical. You see? There exists, for instance, the superficial logical. Logic. Mm -hmm. But it's a superior logic, because it has nothing to do with this intellect. Superior logic has to do with intuition. And when, when you read there something that for other people is incongruent, incong incongruent, is it? Incongruent? In incongruent. For others, it's something logical. Right? For me, for instance, when I read the, the book of Genesis, everything, and I utilize that, the meditation, learning to grasp that with my conscience, and pray to my being, right? That is to receive, that's Kabbalah, you know, to receive information directly from the being. And then for that knowledge to, to be united with my being, or to belong to my being, to my consciousness, not to my intellect. And then the information comes, because to pray is to talk with God. And so this is how you learn, you see, and then you receive. And if you are fully concentrated, you even leave the body. And then you experience with your consciousness that which is written there. <coughs> As when you see a movie. You see? Let's put it in a simple example. Learn it for us. You talk uh, here about the Ten Commandments. And then you put the Ten Commandments in the movie and say you see all. Oh, because in the Bible you see all, 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 only letters, but in the movie you see the actors, they are acting like. Right? Yeah. In the same way, with the consciousness, inside you experience things, you see things related with what is written there. And then you comprehend it. And then you, you, and then you are really learning, you are developing knowledge. There are many things that you have to learn, that one has, what can learn in relation with this, not only related with the Bible, many things. For instance, in the horizontal line, everybody knows, even in kindergarten now, children know that two plus two is four. You know that. Any computer now, knows also that 2 plus 2 is 4. 
But that is an intellect. That is a truth. Two plus two is four. But are you conscious? Are we conscious of that truth? So we accept it, we don't know it. We accept it, but we don't know it. So when we go in meditation, and when we submerge ourselves into deep meditation, two plus two is four, and only to, to, to inquire, you see? Mm -hmm. Why? To know that consciously. And then, to know that consciously is, is a matter of entering into illumination, entering into the being, into the vertical. This is very difficult. You know? To know why two plus two is four. It's too easy just to repeat that. And likewise, many other truths, mathematical truths. Like Einstein, for instance, he wrote about the theory of relativity. But to experience that, what is time with your consciousness? It's a matter of developing your being. And of course, developing the senses, the internal senses. Because right now, in the level in which we are, with the five senses, the scarcely are, are fully developed, there are many things that uh, we cannot experience. There is a type of knowledge that we cannot verify in the state in which we are. We need to develop spiritually in the being. Because we have, of course, seven senses that we have to develop. The being in the physical body is related with a spinal column. It is stated in many times we say that the cerebrum, the spinal nervous system, is a throne of the spirit. But that throne is empty. The spirit has to sit there and to control the human machine. But in order for the spirit to sit there and to control the, the, the human machine, one needs to develop the seven chakras. So illumination increases with the um, increase of the chakras as well as the decreasing of the egos? Of, the of course. In the, in the same level that we are uh, developing the being, in the same way the ego is diminishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the being and the ego are like the oil and the water, they don't mix. Mm -hmm. But of course the development of the tree of life, which in this case in the physical body, I repeat, is related with the spinal column. The tree of life is the being, you see? That is the being, the tree of life. So the spinal column is the tree of life. It's the throne of the spirit. He has to sit there. And learn to, to know through the five senses and the seven chakras, which will give to the superior consciousness of the being twelve senses. So the 12 senses, and then we can clearly see and verify the phenomena of this physical world, you see? I'm not talking here about internal world, just this physical world. Because there are many things that happen in this physical world that we are not aware. In ancient times, the Lemurians, they were with 12 senses, fully developed. This that, that we need to develop in that time, they were with the 12 senses developed, fully developed. So they were, of course, conscious. They were aware of this physical world in, in, a, in a whole in a complete sense. But right now, because we lost the inner senses, 
familiar with the seven chakras. But scarcely this, we see this physical world. We don't know what is going on, like the scientists of this day and age. With all the knowledge that they accumulated in the horizontal line, they're trying to survive and to understand nature. But with the, their instruments, they're trying to, to, to comprehend because they build those instruments in accordance with their theories. But sometimes they, they don't know, like in this day and age, in this very moment, they don't know what's going on. This La Nina. Tomorrow maybe it's going to snow, but maybe it's going to be a, a, a hot weather. Because this is, is something that we don't know, we, we, not, we cannot predict. How is going to be next week? Is the day say in the tea? Why? Because they cannot see beyond. Beyond the five senses. But if we have, if we will have all of the senses of the being, of the consciousness fully developed, we will know what is going on. We will see what is behind those hurricanes, behind those floods. What is the cause of all this? Oil la niña, as a niña, but what? Well, what causes that? Why? All oh, because of pollution, etc. Well, there are many things, but there's something there that we have to discover. And when we discover that, we have to respect as well. You see, because with the type of knowledge that we have, really, we are disrespectful ones. We do not respect what is beyond. People usually are not placed in their being, only in their knowledge. The knowledge that they have, and they judge everything according to that knowledge. Because they forget their being. For instance, because of the five senses, and we don't we don't have the other senses developed because they are atrophied. In this day and age, we receive in universities and colleges top of knowledge that see with disdain the ancient civilizations because they do not understand them, like Egypt, for instance. They say that the Egyptians <coughs> were uh, worship, worshippers of idols. That they uh, were superstitious. Superstitious. In relation with uh, life after death. They were imagining this, imagining that, and they thought of this and, and thought that that, they say. And why do you say that? Because nobody in this day and age can verify that. Nobody knows what is after life. I mean, uh, or after death. I mean. After somebody dies, nobody knows. So the very intellectual people, there are many beliefs and superstitious. Superstitions, right? In relation with uh, that which is after death. They say, they say that. Why? Because they cannot see beyond. And that's precisely, they see with disdain and with due respect other civilizations of the past because they do not understand them. In my case, for instance, thanks to this knowledge that I put in, pra in practice, I don't, I, I don't want to boss and say it here that I am fully developed. No, I am in the process. I am in the process. Because this takes a long time. But I verify many things, hidden things, that are related with Egypt, related with the Tibetans, and many other things. And I know that those things are real. 
And I know that because I experienced that. I know about other dimensions, other worlds, because I experienced that. But I also know that the intellectual person that only perceived through the five senses have this type of knowledge. That when they are not capable of entering into these dimensions or developing these senses, they say that these people that do that are just imagining. It's just their fantasy. They think that, but it's their brain that they are putting their brains. They explain everything in accordance to, with their level. Therefore, it's, it's very difficult to many people understand things which are of the superior dimensions because they have not the senses, you see, to perceive that. So this type of esoteric doctrine and to put it in your brain and to go and talk about it and say, oh, I know about other things now. But if you don't put in practice that, if you don't develop that, it's worthless. Because at the end, when one dies, that is lost. Are you saying all the knowledge that you accumulated is lost? It's lost. In one, if one doesn't put that knowledge in the mm -hmm. consciousness, mm -hmm. it's lost. Mm -hmm. So then, I don't know, in your next life, you don't really remember anything of what you learned. No. Nothing of that. If you don't put that in your consciousness. That's why, you see, we come here and we talk about the law of reincarnation. There are many people that believe in reincarnation, but that is horizontal. Are other people that are afraid and they say, I don't believe in that because it's not written in the Bible. You see? So they don't believe it. But that doesn't matter. To believe or not believe is horizontal. It doesn't change your being. If you work in your being and you learn how to put the knowledge in your consciousness and even experience that, that will remain there. You see? So if you die physically and if you return in a new body, that will be there. It's coming into my mind this very moment, for instance. I was talking with the master, Samael on the door. He said, Master, I read many of his books and I agree with them. But you know why I agree with them? And then he asked, Why? Because before entering into this doctrine and reading your books, I was very always inquisitive and in reading always, especially the Bible. And when I was reading certain chapters, I said, no, this signifies this and this, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. From where I was having that, I said, I, I, I see that I was having that in me. I said, well, I said, it's because you were working in your being in other lives. Then later on, with the years, I remember that I was doing this work in other lives. You see, when I said I was doing this work, it was said I was reading this work. Right? Or was memorizing this work. No, I was not doing it. I was practically doing it. Not only in this physical world, but in all other dimensions. So therefore, it's in my consciousness. And somehow I was bringing it out. And now it comes, like, searches more and more. But it's because it's there, because I did it. It's, it's, it's not like something free. Then it, it, it came out again, and I know that it's more and more and more. But I know that in order to bring that out from me, it's not a matter of being lazy or just crossing my legs and and, and watching TV or or walking in the streets or reading something about it. No, in order to take that out of me, I have to be in contact with my being again, and that is a way of practical way. Meditation. The way to be in contact with it. And to 
take out from me all that which is an obstacle. I can only receive that. What is the obstacle in order to see that? My ego. My ego, my lust, my anger, my pride, my greed, my envy, my gluttony, my laziness, my hatred, my fear, especially. Because there are many people that are afraid. If you are afraid, you cannot go ahead. You see? Fear is the worst of the defects that you can have in this type of, of development. Don't be afraid. Develop your being. Follow your being. Find your being. Meditate. And quiet. You see? This is how one finds oneself. But don't let us not fall into a mistake thinking that because we are going to read this book or read these books or memorize this or, or talk about this we are already advancing and developing. We are just developing the internet, of course. But not the beginning. There are many masters that uh, are masters by developing the being alone. That they trust and put themselves in certain gurus that guide them and going to develop that. And they experience the knowledge that we talk here about reincarnation, about the chakras, about the karma, because they are in contact with the laws of karma. And they talk about karma in eternal planes. They know about reincarnation because they remember their past lives. They know about the chakras because they have fully developed their own chakras. So when they fully develop their being, they have a lot of knowledge. You see? But then, when they descend to the physical body, they are illiterate. They don't know how to write. They don't know how to read in this physical world. Because they are there in, the, in certain places, temples, or in the Himalayas, doing certain developments. You see? And when they come to these cities, for instance, usually they come and they don't know how to read, how to write, they are ignorant in the horizontal. You see? You grasp that? In the horizontal line, they are ignorant. But in the vertical, they are great sages. But in this society, people judge if you know how to read and how to write and you have a certain degree, certain title, you are somebody else. When somebody comes and is illiterate and ha can have a lot of knowledge in the vertical, people really don't like to hear. Because sometimes the person has, no, even has, doesn't know how to talk, you know what I mean? He has to learn the language, or even his own language, he doesn't know how to communicate. And that's why this type of, they exist a lot of this type of masters in Asia. And the disciples, when they approach them, they know they have to develop a lot of patience in order to grasp and to understand what they want to say. Because they have the knowledge in their being. But in the horizontal line, they are zero. But with patience they learn from them and they, and they know that there is a practical way. That's why the Master Samael the Lord advises, he said, do not reject the horizontal, but do not forget the vertical. Read books of great masters like Madame Blavatsky, Krishnamurti, read my book, study them. But not like when you read a newspaper, meditate in them. Comprehend them with your consciousness. So you can communicate the knowledge. In this case, for instance, I learn, I study. The book of Madame Lavatsky, the book of the Master, I read the Bible, I read all the books like the Quran, 
Many of the books that will nourish the knowledge that I like in my being. In order for me to communicate, to give to you. In order for me to give the knowledge that I am developing inside more wisely. Because I know that I am in a society of intellectual animas. In order to, I took the L out of there in order to, to be more gentle, you see? <laughs> right? <laughs> because animal comes from anima, a soul. And I know that in the image, everybody develops the intellect. Everybody has a lot of knowledge. But in the horizontal line, in the personality, I know that. Personally, all the masters on my own verses learn about the quantum phenomena. Because the quantum phenomena really is in relation with a certain development and certain, uh, in order to understand the being, the dimensions. By learning that, you, you grasp that in mathematically you enter into higher knowledge. But not just intellectual. Meditation. But, as I say, when one learns a lot, for instance, related with knowledge, I'm not saying that I have the whole knowledge, but I'm still learning in the horizontal line. Because I have this type of uh, mind that I like to learn new things, but things related with the spirit. Things which relate with the reality. No radish, you know. Like for instance, I know about the theory of evolution, in which Darwin and other Huxley and many other materialistic anthropologists are involved. That the man says that human being comes from the ape and many other things. I know that. But I, I force myself to know it in order to contradict it. Mm -hmm. Because I, or we, the Gnostics, we do not deny the law of evolution. It exists. But the theory of evolution is stupid. 100%. There are certain things there that are in relation with certain laws of nature, but scarcely they understand that. And therefore they are making a mess of the law of evolution with that theory. You see? Because you can study, for instance, certain laws of the universe or of nature and make your own theory. And that theory could be wrong in relation with that law. Like in the Middle Ages, they were studying the earth. And they thought that the earth was the center of the universe. And that was flat. And all the stars were rotating around. So time you go, what's wrong? The earth is in the center of the universe. It is true. Because we are in this earth and everything is rotating around us. But logically it's not the center of the universe. It is the center of our own universe. Do you understand that? For instance, myself, when I remember my being, I am inside of my body. I am the center of the universe. Everything is around me. Because I am here, remembering myself, in my being, in the vertical. So everything is around me. Everything rotates around me. From the objective point of view, you see, from the conscious point of view of my being. But if I say that I am the center of the universe, it would be stupid. I am not the center of the universe. Do you, do you ask that? Wouldn't the first one be the subjective point of view? I'm confused. That's when you're looking at yourself saying, I'm aware of myself consciously and I am the center of the universe. Yeah, and everything is around you. Is that objective? Or is that, that is subject. subject. The subject. I am in the center here. Yes. And everything is around me. That is to be. That is to be. You see? 
That's why we say that the center of the universe is everywhere and nowhere. Hmm? That's, that's the reality. But if we study, physically speaking, this galaxy, we know the center of this galaxy is Sirius. Star Sirius. And then this solar system is in one of the arms of this spiral galaxy in which this planet is. Okay. Well, obviously, physically speaking, we are not in the center. But consciously, in, when we are in being, we are in the center. So the ancient talk about that. The Earth is the center of the universe. From the objective, in relation with the being, is real. But if we start in, inquiring about, we know that it's not physically the center. You grasp that? You, you comprehend now that? You, you, you get it? Mm -hmm. Because that's precisely the confusion. Many of us talked about the center of the universe, because they are not identified with the outside. They are fully identified with their being. They are. So therefore, if you are there in your being always, you feel that you are in the center, and everything is around you. Mm -hmm. But if you are not there, obviously, you are lost in the space. That's an to meditation to experience that? You know, well, in the level that we are right now, it's only through meditation, of course. Because one needs to enter into ecstasy in order to feel that. And you are there, and everything is. And when your consciousness expands, Expands from the center to the periphery. But the center is yourself, is your being. That is the center of the universe. My being is the center of the universe. And each being of you is the center. So there are many centers. And everything is around. From that point of view, you don't find the center of, of, of this firmament. There are many centers. In every unit, you find the center. And that center is the being. This is how you have to, to grasp it, to comprehend it, you know. But when you experience that, you understand everything. You see the reality of this universe. And of course, with the advancement in the vertical line, you will reach the moment in which even when you walk, when you work, when you eat, Anywhere you are, you will be always in that ecstasy, in that point which is your being. That is to be in constant samadhi, in constant satori. But for that, we need to develop. And then when you are that, you are always in rapture. You see, for instance, in Christianity, a being that was always like that is St. Francis of Assisi, always in his being, happy, you see, always there. He never forgot his being a second, and everything around him was going around it. Even though he was suffering, sometimes uh, experiencing very painful things, he was always in happiness, because he was always there. Mm -hmm. seeing life in his own reality. Yeah? So when we were talking about um, identifying, we were talking about how people tend to identify in a horizontal plane. What are some words that, so we can understand, is truly identifying with your being? If you can help me understand that. To identify one with his own being, <coughs> one has to feel that one is inside the body. And to remember the present. God has no form. But in such a way, we need to meditate. Is, is what, I, is what I, I, I grasp, you know. We have to meditate in order for us to experience the being. And when one experiences the being, 
and then it's easy to, to be, right? And to do the effort, because one has that experience, and one knows what the being is. And it's, it's, even though it's not incarnated in the body, it's in contact with the body. So can you know before actually experiencing, can you understand? Is it possible to understand or have an inkling of what it is, though perhaps you have not fully experienced it? Yeah. Yeah? Is I mean, to be is to be here and now. That's to be. Feel yourself inside your body. Do not identify with your knowledge of your horizontal. That knowledge of your horizontal line will throw in you different images because it's in relation with your personality. Things that you learned by example, things that you learn through books or through lectures, circumstances of life, all of that is what we call ego. Comes and goes, comes and goes in your mind. If you identify with it, you are out of yourself, of your being. So leave the moment, be inside of you, experience life inside always. Remember that you are inside always. Do not identify with the knowledge. Images, thoughts will appear. See them without identifying with them. Because it's impossible to stop the mind in the beginning to throw on you images, thoughts, even feelings. You have to be accustomed to serving them without identifying with them. Because if you identify, you immerse yourself in any of those thoughts or images, you lose the sense of yourself. In order to, to not to lose the sense of yourself, you always have to feel that you are inside the body. You have to know always that the body is a vehicle, is a vesture. Don't identify with it. With the body. Yourself is the self, is the being. And the being and the self are very close to the consciousness. The consciousness and the self are very close. To be conscious, self-conscious is necessary. But in the sense of conscious of oneself. Because there is all the meaning of self-conscious, you know. You take that out of it. Conscious of oneself is necessary. Meaning that the consciousness is that entity inside of us that gives us awareness of, of that which is. Be aware that you are inside of your body and remember that you are your being. That is what we call, in other lectures we say, filial love, which is to feel that one is a child of God. But in order to feel that one is a child of God, remember that God is here and now. He's not in the past. He's not the God of the Bible or the, Bible, or the God of, of, of the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita. That God is your God. It's inside of you. It's here and now. It's present. It's life. It's that life in your body. God is here. My God is now. And always now. It's not what I said. It's this moment. What I said is now in the past. Now. So it's here. Now. Now. So my consciousness is here. And I remember that now. And now is life, and now is God inside of you. You know, when you know the consciousness will awake, will advance in the path, in a sense it will awake, and then you will see more and more the presence of your being. In the beginning, you have just to, to feel, to use your heart, your intuition, 
in order to sense that which is the presence of, of the omnipresence of God here and now. But do not identify that God, that essence, that being with the knowledge that you have related with God. When Buddhism, let's say, when that state you see the image of Buddha, kill, erase that Buddha out of you. You see? Because to be here now is to experience, that is to be a Buddha, an, an enlightened one. So suddenly your mind projects the Buddha. It takes that image out there. This is your mind projecting something. Your being is now here. You know, has nothing to do with those images. Sometimes to help myself concentrate during meditation, I will, for instance, when meditating on the heart, um, I will either be imagining a light within, or um, certain words help me trigger a feeling of um, serenity. And that feeling, I like to think, is centered in the heart. So I will meditate on that feeling. Are you saying we shouldn't identify with an image or a, even a feeling? Because that helps me concentrate a little it's bit. It's good. That's I good. mean, it's good that you feel that, but without losing your attention, mm -hmm. your awareness. Mm -hmm. Because if you lose that and you set that heart, and that's it, my God is in my heart, that fire, you're imagining that. You see? Mm -hmm. so that helps, because in the heart we have the left, in the left vertical we have the atom moves that put in contact ourselves with our own particular God, with our own particular being. So any type of mantra, any type of practice that helps us to do that is good mm -hmm. without forgetting the moment. Mm -hmm. Without forgetting the now. You see? Because in the beginning we sometimes we need truth. But in the end we don't need that. Because when you experience that you know what is that. You see? You know what is that. Not the type of knowledge that we have, because there are people in, this, in the horizontal line that have a lot of knowledge of God. Christians know about God, but the God that is written in the Bible, but they interpret it according to their own wind. Muslims know about God, but about the God that is written in the Quran. But they interpret according to their own whim. But like the Buddhists, everybody has an image in the brain, in the horizontal line. But here, you have not have any image. But that image is the horizontal knowledge that you learn. It has nothing to do with the reality. Experience that. And then you will know. You see, for instance, I experienced many times in the past, with my inner being. So I, I know it's nothing that I was imagining. It's a, it's, it's a, a conscious experience. Okay. So therefore that is there. But I have to remember this now, in this moment. Because if I identify with that experience of the past that is in my mind, and then I'm losing the moment. If I remember that without losing the moment, I am remembering him in the right way. Without remember, without forgetting this second, because God is this second. What I said is another second. It's far away. Now is another second. Now is another second. Now is another second. That is. In meditation is what you have to do. You close your eyes and you concentrate in yourself second after second without losing that awareness that you are inside of the body. The, without losing that, if you lose that for a moment, you are not meditating. You are just wasting your time. That's why when somebody enters into Satori, first, before that, we had to acquire that that is called uh, empty mind.
in which one does not think. One get there by doing it. Some people that have very strong concentration and they are here now and they relax themselves very easily get that experience in one day. Others that are difficult, they keep working and have it in one week. Others they keep practicing, they have it in two weeks. Others they have it in one month, practicing daily. Others they have it in two months. Others they endure three months. Others they endure six months. Other people endure one year. But daily practice because everybody has different level, different way, it's difficult for them. Others, takes two years. There are some monks that they, after 30 years of meditating daily, suddenly they get, you see? But it all depends. Why? You have to do it. Why? Why one day, why three years? Because that depends on your mind. There are people that they don't have so strong ego. When you have a very strong ego, when your anger is very fat, your greed, your hatred, your lust, then to quiet the mind, to quiet your lust, to quiet your greed, to quiet your envy, it's a long time. Meditation, annihilation, until you are more light. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, you, you are like 500 pounds. It's difficult. Yeah. But if you have a little ego, but you tell me who in this day and age has a thin ego. So what accounts for daily fluctuations? Hmm? What accounts for daily fluctuations? One day you can meditate and you feel concentrated in, in the moment, and the, and the next two days you, you just can't do it, and then you have kind of a half good session the next day and then three days you can't do it and then sometimes happens because one is expecting the same thing the next day mm-hmm. but who is the one that's expecting that the ego. the ego always expects things this is what is happening I remember I was in meditation and suddenly zoom I quiet my mind and I abandoned through the pineal gland and I immerse myself in other dimension. And I saw something beautiful. But then I sense that mind that was below trying to enter as well. Because I, I, that's, that's the disgrace for us, you know. We are connected with the mind, with the ego. Even though we are experiencing something out, always the connection exists. Because it's our creation, it's what we have inside. It's quiet, but for a second was quiet. And because that thing that is below, which is the devil. And then, because of that, because the devil cannot enter into heaven, my soul lost the experience and I became, I mean, into my mind again. And I remember that I was in my, in, on my bed and I, and, and I wanted to experience that so badly that I was even jumping, like trying to go out. But was my body jumping? And I noticed that it was my mind, the one that wanted to experience that. Because experience came into the brain, and the whole thing in the ego, even the ego, was aware of that, my own ego. But that was not experience of the ego, it was experience of the consciousness. The next day, I was meditating and expecting the same thing. Who was doing that? You see? And then one has to do all with the same thing without any expectation. Because that that always is expecting something new is the ego. Must you have that again? The desire. What is desire? Desire is the longing for that same experience. When the ego wants to experience that. Desire is never real thing? No. Desire is the ego. Desire is mind. Desire is beautiful. Like, why can it ever be a good thing to desire something and then to finally achieve it? 
desire is not greed. In any way? Anything that one desire is always related with the mind. Do you desire to achieve knowledge? That's yeah, what can I desire to, uh, to achieve knowledge? But one will achieve that knowledge only in the horizontal line. Desire accomplishes its longings only in the horizontal line, never in the vertical. Never in the vertical. Desire, you, you want to have a lot of money. Well, you, you develop in the horizontal line and you, develop, you have a lot of money. But that has nothing to do with the vertical. A desire is good in the vertical line. I mean, in the horizontal line. Yeah, in the horizontal line, desire it develops there. But at the end, you die and you lose, and you lose everything. In the vertical line, desire does not work. If you are there with desire of experiencing what God is, you're wasting your time. Because it's the mind, and the mind cannot enter into that. It's only the conscience. And the conscience has nothing to do with the mind. The mind has to be quiet. In order to acquire knowledge of God, one has to quiet the mind. Not to have desire of that. There's why many people in these in these uh, times they want they have the desire of knowing many things about God. And so they read the Bible, they go to the bookstore, they read this book, they read another book, and they another book. And sometimes they learn things, but they are unknown for the country. But that is only the or something. In order to experience, you have to work in yourself. Your three brains. You have to quiet your three brains in order to develop the being. Anthony, when you um, when you say that when we meditate that we we gain more understanding, we understand it in our consciousness, we know it in our consciousness. Um, and yeah, I believe that at different levels there are different laws of logic and different levels of understanding. So if we take knowledge now, we try and integrate it through meditation, we're still only going to understand it at whatever level that we have evolved to, that there could be more understanding later as we evolve higher. Is that true? In certain certain uh, messages, written messages, of course, talking here what is written, has different levels of understanding because every written message has seven ways of interpretations, but in according with the law of seven. But the same the same interpretation for one consciousness is the same for the other, without any difference. You know? mm -hmm. But of course it depends on the intensity in which you see things. For instance, this chair, if we encourage how the, if this chair was made I do it from my way, you do it through your way. But through your way, you will reach the same conclusion that I will reach. Right? How this chair was made. The same the consciousness. Through your way, maybe you will take more time because of your level, but it will be the same thing. Because it's a reality. You understand that? Hmm? Of course, there are many levels. Things that one person, because has is in this level, very high, will understand and can comprehend things very fast. While another person that is here will take years and years and learn to go and go and finally comprehend what the other person understood easily. But because this person was higher than the other in the being. Of course. The person that is here in the very tip of the vertical line is without ego. The person that is in the bottom is with a very fat ego. And that depends on the experience. And while you ascend, the ego is less, 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 less. Right? But in the vertical line, also you can descend. There are people that instead of ascending, they descend. Because you can degenerate yourself more. Did you hear about the fallen angels? They were on the top, and suddenly they fell. They gave them to the bottom. That's why they said they became demons. So the level of the being is in relation with our behavior. 
consciously speaking, how our consciousness behave. Not the behavior in the horizontal line. Because in the horizontal line, you can be a good person. You can improve yourself in your job, in your work. But that has nothing to do with the vertical. There's a lot of people that do, that do good things in the horizontal line for others. But they are not advancing in the vertical. But are they not to some degree connected in terms of looking at our egos and, for instance, laziness and trying to rid yourself of that and, or, or lust or gluttony? And to some degree, they do affect the horizontal plane. And that is, if you're conscious, don't you see changes then in the horizontal plane? Yeah. So they are sort of They change, of course. Because uh, when you rise in different levels, the horizontal line will uh, approach you in accordance to your level, right? Mm. Or then in society, the personality of others will approach you in accordance to your level. That's why when we go outside in this society, which is always developing the horizontal line, each one of us will face this society in accordance to the level. Mm. That's obvious. Some, some things, for instance, that are very important for people in the horizontal line. You see? They're very important for them. But when one rises in the vertical, a certain higher level, what was important now is not important. Because one is seeing life in different ways. But for other people, for instance, that's why when you enter into this knowledge, which is a vertical development, some people are very identified with the horizontal, where the personality is developed. And they say, this is very important, because in order to be somebody in this world, you will need this and this needs and this, because they are in this level. But meanwhile, you are advancing, and you are in a higher level. And then you say, what? I don't have to identify with that, what these people say. And if you communicate that to this person, would turn and say, you are crazy. Are you in a cult or what? Okay. Because they don't understand. Because they are in a different level. That's why one needs to know how to communicate with others. That's precisely also the vertical. To learn how to behave with others. How to communicate with others. The best thing is to inquire on which level this person is and then to approach the person. Because if you approach the person and you don't know in which level the person is, you can scare the person away. You know what I mean? It's like I said. There are certain people that are in a certain level that I talk to them and I teach them very heavy knowledge which is meat. But there are people that they don't need meat because it's heavy for them. They need to drink milk. Mm-hmm. And as and as uh, Saba was telling me, sometimes not even milk. They need water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, you have to know to to inquire. You know, this people, this people need water. So give them water. But if you go and give them meat, it's an indigestion. They cannot digest that. This is you are in a cult. This is this is from the devil. Because you don't know how to communicate, you know. This is why in the vertical this is you, you need to meditate in order to know how to approach society. Sometimes you need to be quiet. You hear the person, you say, No, no, here is better if I shut my mouth. Let's talk about other things. Sometimes you can feel that you're really progressing and you and feel like you're um, you know, managing things, you don't have a lot of ego in, in your dealings with other people and and then, you know, three days later, you know, you're not feeling great or um, you know, you've got a lot of pressures at that time and all of a sudden, you know, you feel really heavy with ego and the way you deal with others. 
it's, it's different when you're moving up and down at those times as well? Yeah, of course. That means that uh, sometimes one is related with the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are related with the mind. When one, one is, for instance, feeling that one has no ego, that one is very light, without ego, right? It's because the circumstances or the environment is very pleased with us, right? It's not poking us. If we, that's why the Master Samaya says, if somebody wants to annihilate the ego, this one has to work voluntarily in making different type of situations for him by will. You, see, you need, he says, according to my observation, I have a lot of anger. Well then, if you know somebody that will always bring that anger out of you, be more frequent with this person in order for you to be rid of your anger to meditate of course right? because after that you have to meditate right? but if you are not in contact with the people that make you angry and then you feel nice you, see, you feel peachy <laughs> right because nobody is, is bothering you and suddenly somebody is bothering you <laughs> to learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,